Okay, I'm here. My guest is Chris Heron. Hey. You are the you're the host, host. the creator, yeah, executive producer. <laughs> no. Oh. No money. I oh, have yeah. Enough. We um, have no um, money. The Seventh Art, which yeah. is an amazing video series about cinema and interviewing filmmakers and doing all sorts of interesting video, interesting video essays about films. Mm. That is correct. Yes. Okay, and you're a cinema studies student and master's student. This is also why I need you, because there are some things that I can't remember from school that I should that can help me come to some conclusions. So first, I want to talk a little bit about uh, film surrealism because one of your best and one of your earlier interviews is with Guy Madden mm -hmm. who is now your homeboy. Yeah. That is correct? Uh, we are not homeboys. <laughs> no? We're going to watch some clips today on this watermelon. Um, I just need to calibrate it. Okay. Are you familiar with uh, El Bulli? The It's no longer operational but this Spanish restaurant? Where was it? Uh, Spain. Oh, no. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Or, do you watch, do you watch a lot of chef documentaries no, but I, I, the I, know the name, I know the name, yeah, yeah. Um, so El Bulli, it's no longer operational, but it was sort of this pioneering Spanish restaurant where they did this sort of deconstructive molecular mm -hmm. gastronomy. So this is footage from the movie Lodge Door, mm -hmm. and these are some of the actual El Bulli dishes that they make in terms of, like, weird insectoid imagery juxtaposed with scorpions fighting. Um, and both whole, of these are Spanish. <laughs> uh, excrementality, I mean we have the toilet on screen. This is actually some kind of iced tea, green thing, but it literally looks like bile in something that you would throw up into. And even like the surrealist filmmakers, they recognize that there is something about putting things in your mouth and food and like the stuff that goes into you. And then you look at these dishes where it looks like, you know, a crab soup that looks like someone threw up into it a clamshell that looks like someone like sneezed into it. This is a footage from their, a picture from uh, a rabbit course. Okay, this? Red wine? Mm. No, this is rabbit's blood. And that's why I thought it was interesting, the idea of, like, is there cinematic surrealism today? And how do you compensate for the fact that people are so adaptable to things visually? Well, it's interesting because like, we also have to accept the, the premise that surrealist uh, imagery is no longer as powerful. So does that hold over, like, will the rabbit's blood at some point be part of the hegemony of cuisine? Like, I don't, I can't, I would never get used to that. I think it would always create some sort of challenge or distance or possibly growth, if that's the idea of surrealism. Well, it's also interesting that at this point, I think in Guy Madden's films, the surrealism is less off-putting than the melodrama. So does that mean that there will one day be like a, a restaurant that serves a kind of TV dinner throwback? Like, <laughs> and that's kind of the new vanguard? And the other thing I was thinking of is that the, the kind of legacy of that restaurant is having young chefs that kind of want to deal with molecular gastronomy before they can make like a proper pie crust, right? Yeah. Like, so I'm wondering if that has a, a corollary with, you know, how filmmakers will make like, especially with viral videos, things that are visually really crazy, but that's kind of the norm and developing a complex story is maybe less interesting. <laughs> <laughs> 